everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're having a good Wednesday. We are, uh, we have found ourselves here tonight to record a podcast episode. That sounds bad. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 get going. I haven't I haven't done one of these um, in ages, so um, let's see if I still can. Um, Helen, thank you for the follow. Um, I am. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Drachenlord once again today. Um, I promise I'm going to update everybody. So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Um, anyway, let's um, let's get over here. Let's get everything fired up. First off, coffee. It's been uh, it's been a very long day. Um, but obviously there's still work to do, so uh, drinking coffee, um, obviously. Um, okay, what do we need? We need a browser. We need a browser. Uh, we need uh, Hindenburg. Uh, we need this abomination. Um, and we need to uh, arm all the tracks and click record. And have a little, have a little test. One, two, three. One, two, three. Looks good. Everything looks good from here. Um, and click record. And have a little, have a little test. One, two, three. One, two, three. Mm, yep. That seems to work. All right. Shall we start? Shall we do this? I think I'm, I'm going to get right into the show. Um, as usual, you know, usual ground rules apply, of course. I'm not going to interact with chat as much, uh, you know, for the benefit of the podcast listeners. But you probably know all this uh, if you've been here before. Otherwise, exclamation mark podcast um, like this. We'll explain it. Um, right. I think that's everything. Um, let's let's see if I can still do this. Here goes nothing. You're listening to The Private Citizen. This is episode 113 for Wednesday, the 13th of April, 2022. Lex Draconis. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Fab. I'm your host. As usual, um, I'm back. Um, I'm sorry. A bit of a unplanned hiatus. I'm going to address that in a second. Nice to have you here. Um, obviously, I'm coming to you live from the beautiful town of Düsseldorf in Germany. And um, today we're going to talk about a, a very German topic once again. Uh, the Drachenlord, which I've talked about earlier. The German scandal YouTuber number one um, is up to interesting shenanigans once again. And um, yeah, I want to. I, I promised I'm going to update you on that and I do want to want to keep everybody on track here because I think it's a very, you know, important topic. I'm going to get into why that is, just a very quick recap in a little bit. Um, but let's let's first address uh, that I wasn't here, that I missed two weeks of releases. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, it's, it's just been, it's, you know, it's just been hell. I say this a lot. I've, I've just been very busy, um, which you know sometimes you know I'm as, as, being a freelancer. Um, this this kind of stuff just happens, and um, it's just you know something I can't avoid. Sometimes I have to you know just 
make the decision to make some money and I, I've, I've been doing that uh, i've actually been on the road like last week and then the week before uh, there was other stuff and then actually on monday i wanted to record an episode and it was all set i had this all prepped actually this very episode and i was going to do it and there is a, a building site close to where i live there's still like this is all kind of new where i live it's like a new area uh, and they're still building shit um, right now. They're, I think they're building a supermarket and they were very loud. So actually, with even with the windows, I've got very good isolated windows. The walls are very thick. Um, you could you could hear. Um, I was actually doing some test recordings because I was like, does it actually I have a very good microphone? I have a dynamic microphone. It usually deals very well with like outside noise. Um, but this actually cut through. It was I don't know what they were doing. I think they were cutting concrete. You know, when they use like a big saw blade to cut, it was a very shrill, high-pitched sound that basically cut through everything. Um, so I actually couldn't record and I, I gave up and I thought I'm gonna, just going to do it on Wednesday as normal. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to make up for, I'm, I'm definitely going to do this. Uh, there's going to be an episode uh, a week this year um, as usual. Uh, it's not going to be every week, but I'm going to catch up. I'm going to eventually do this. I have a lot of topics I want to talk about. I've got all this stuff prepped. Um yeah, so I really want to do this. That being said, there's not going to be an episode next Wednesday. I don't know. I'm going to try to release one before that, but I, um, I've i got some commitments on Wednesday, so I know I won't be recording on Wednesday and I won't be releasing any shows. So just so you know, um, I'm thankful for everybody who's sticking with me, especially the people who are supporting the show monetarily. Um, I'm going to mention that at the end of the show, of course, uh, again. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very... Um, um, appreciative of you just sticking with me even if, if i miss some releases i know i've promised episodes and, but let's not get into all of that again it's just gonna some people actually were actually really nice on the forum said maybe you should um, dial down the goal of like one episode a week but i still think it's achievable and I've, i definitely have enough to talk about it's just you know i think this is mostly still like aftershocks from the pandemic um, I'm just trying to make some money right now because I really need it because I really lost a lot of income, um, you know, over the last two years that wasn't planned. And I'm trying to make up for it. Also, there's, I don't know how it is where you are, but in Germany, there's notable inflation right now. Everything's just rising. It's not only like petrol, it's like the basic food stuff is just more expensive everything's more expensive so i'm i'm just gonna i'm I'm trying to hustle right now so that's you know um and and sadly you're, you're feeling a, a little bit of the aftershocks uh as well um through me uh not releasing episodes but i'm, I'm gonna get back on track um yeah so uh mea culpa sorry sorry about that um actually uh, posted at some point in the forum and um, so if you if you want to know if like there's um you know, if if um if 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 I'm not releasing episodes and you want to know what's going on, uh, go to forum.fab.industries, forum.fab.industries, and you can. I I don't. You don't even have to sign up. I mean, you can just read the forum anyway. And you you'll you'll get updates. Um, but with that. Let's let's get to the let's let's not talk about all of that boring shit. Let's actually I'm I'm here. Let's let's get to some content. Um let, let's do an actual episode. And first I need more coffee because it's uh in the evening here and I've been um I've been working all day. Unsurprisingly, but I also, I also have been doing chores and stuff. I've been running. Um, like one of the, I think I've mentioned this before, one of the reasons that I'm actually not l like, um, you know, I could cut some corners in some places and then still do podcasts. But like in the past, I've, 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 I've always cut corners with my exercising and then just, you know, use those two hours to do a podcast or whatever. Um, and I've actually, um, now it's been a few years ago, actually, um, actually before I started this, this, this very podcast that you're listening to right now, um, by the way, if you want to go to the, if you want to, 
get the stuff for this week's episode or generally information go to private citizen or press if you're new that's where all the show notes are copious show notes but anyway before i started uh, the private citizen i actually made this pledge for myself that has nothing to do with the podcast just generally i've promised myself that i wouldn't be cutting corners on the exercising anymore because i used to do that and then you always get off the rhythm like and i'm running and you know when you when you when you cut corners for like two weeks it's like massively hard to get into it again. I've, I've had this right now because um, I didn't run much last month because first uh, we got we had the quarantine because we got the virus uh, and then I had a tattoo done. I uh, couldn't run for two weeks after this. So I basically didn't run all March. So now I'm like on the uphill again. But like I'm sometimes I'm not doing episodes because I've, you know, Unlike the past, I've I've decided to never cut corners on exercise anymore. I'd rather cut corners on, on work now or some other stuff I'm doing. And um I'm actually much more healthier for it and it's actually better for my work because I'm I'm no I'm more energized, you know, like like now after I've I've been running. I actually feel really good. Anyway, I I'm 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 rambling again. I should we should we should talk about the actual talk topic I want to talk about. So today um we're gonna talk about the Drachenlord again. Um if you don't know who that is, Rainer Winkler um there is a tag like if you go to the show notes go to the ones for this episode 113 um i've linked the first well actually the first there's another mention of the name before but there's a i've linked drachenlord and that links to the tag that gives you all the episodes so you know on this topic especially it might be worth listening to the other stuff first um so i'm not gonna recap everything but basically he is a is a German youtuber he has massive problems with his community basically who doesn't they're mostly not fans um he refers to them as his haters and you know i've talked about that like why that is a that term's problematic but you know some people hate him actually but largely he has detractors and people Sorry, I need to. I'm gonna have to <coughs> coffee for a second. I'm I'm sorry. Ah, the hay fever is starting to cut in on top of everything else. It's not 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 very helpful. Um. Anyway. Um. Yeah. So so he has he had people show up at his house house and mass and that basically hound him and and we talked about all of that. Um. The thing why why I I I this is very important to me. I mean I find the whole saga very interesting on a personal level it's kind of like trash it's like jersey shore in real like you know if it was actually not scripted that's what this whole thing is about to me and it's very interesting but that's not why i'm talking about it on the show i'm talking about it on the show because this is a watershed moment um for hate speech and and the definition of hate speech and the laws that are that are coming and that are gonna come because of this and um yeah granted it's a watershed moment for germany and the german legal system but i think this is kind of a we're kind of an outlier i think this is something that will that is inevitable um and that will happen all over the world so you might as well you know learn about it now from me because for once germany's at the forefront i feel so basically to to all like to not get into the drama and the the the, the people everything basically what is happening here is somebody who has an internet presence that that rubs a large amount of people the wrong way and without even arguing if that is you know, if 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 he's right, if the people are right, doesn't really, the other people are right? Doesn't really matter. It rubs people the wrong way, and we'll we just have to accept that. You know, um, even if we don't agree with that, we have to accept that that is happening. And it's one thing to have that happen digitally, uh, but because he for years, uh, Rainer Winkler, Drachenlord, uh, for years has been like banning people left and right and basically taking people's ability away to like dump on him digitally um this whole thing in a you know very complicated um series of circumstances that i ex- talked about in the last two episodes actually for on you know so if you're interested go back and listen to those um you know uh, a lot uh, you know i talked about this for a long time anyway um it's basically transformed this kind of 
reaction to his content like from the digital realm into the physical realm right and i f i feel like this is going to happen more and more because um social media platforms and and people are um more and more just banning and and deleting comments and stuff like that and this is for me personally um it's a very interesting development because, you know, every, I, I talk about this on the show a lot, how everybody, you know, journalists, but everybody else has like their biases and where they come from, right? And you, you got to remember, I was born in 83 and I had a computer very early on, but I got, we only got the internet in 98. But like when you got on the internet at the end of the 90s um, and you went on a forum, like flame wars were a daily occurrence, right? What people today would term hate um, was just the normal way of people talking to each other in certain corners of the internet, especially in gaming culture. Um, everybody was there um, under pseudon pseudonym, like you didn't, like it was all pseudonymous, right? Nobody knew any real names and just like um, insulting people. Like I, I was in some forums where like basically... Uh, you know, calling somebody a whore son was was basically a way of saying hello. Um, you know, you can you can talk about how if that's a culture you want to be in, but that's just the way it was, right? That that's just the way it was, and not not all internet forums were like this certainly, but I think the tone generally on the internet back then was was either a lot more civil in some forums or a lot more rough in others. Um, but the important thing is nobody really took that seriously. That was kind of par for the course. Like you, if you were in the kind of this kind of forum, I mean, you might have stumbled in there by accident, but like you'd be shocked and you'd never log on again if you don't like this kind of talk, right? So, like swearing and just like being very, very opinionated and being very, very rude to people um, was just accepted, and nobody took it seriously, really, right? Um, so in those forums, if somebody said, I'm going to find you and kill you, everybody knew that that wasn't an actual threat to a person's life. That was just somebody who was anonymous saying that to another anonymous person he'd never met. And there were quite different forums. There were some forums where you, you know, um, were tight-knit communities or where you, you know, met people in real life. And there certainly that wouldn't happen. But like this was like an anonymous people saying this to another anonymous people, and 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 that wasn't like back then that wasn't hate. So um, we have a culture shift on the internet where what is defined, you know, in the last I don't know thirty years. I'm an old man. Surprise, um, you know, if you if you're watching me live stream this on Twitch, which you know, there's a if you go to Private Citizens or Press, there's a link up up the top to my Twitch channel where you can watch these live or you can, you know, go to YouTube and watch, uh, you know, a recording after the fact. You, you can see my hair. Uh, <laughs> I am, I've, over the last few years, I've rapidly turned gray. I'm now almost white. Uh, I'm an old man. And back in the day, that was just the way it is. And we have a culture shift on the internet where suddenly um, people take this kind of thing seriously. And they take death threats of the internet seriously, which, you know, wasn't 10, 15 years ago. Nobody took that shit seriously. I don't know what it is. It's maybe some, some you know, some, some, um, some events like, you know, real life events where people actually, you know, there were mass shootings and stuff like that. Um, and, and attacks where like they, these were preempted by people saying things on the internet, right? And, and so people started to be afraid of that. But I feel like that's only like maybe 10 occurrences in the whole history of the internet where, where this has actually happened. And of course, everybody who's going to do a mass shooting these days is going to publish some kind of manifesto on the internet beforehand. That's just what you do. Um, but some, some, somehow people have started to take this seriously. I, I feel like it's some kind of like the same for lack of a better term, brain cancer that is sp spreading about video games, right? Where where the mass, the, the mainstream media has, has for years been going on about how violent video games cause like violent, uh, you know, kids and there's violence in real life, which is all bullshit. There's been a 
a ton of this like psychological studies, sociological studies, you know, um, medical studies about these people, and there's absolutely no connection between, um, uh, you know, violent video games and and and. To, I mean, there is there are certain connections. Like if you if you're gonna go and 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 go shoot up some place. And, and you're interested in guns, of course you're going to play first-person shooters, right? I mean, that's a, that's a connection, but the connection is not... These video games have, like, um, I don't know, uh, uh, made a whole generation of kids more violent or did they, they caused the violence, right? That's been completely debunked, but it's still... It's being brought up in the press again and again, and people start to believe this, right? Um, I mean, um, you know, as gamers, we would laugh about this, I mean, you know, I, I talk to people in gaming forums or whatever, uh, or people I know, and we always laugh about these kind of stories. But now you get people who are now like in their twenties, maybe, uh, or like the you know their teens, and you talk to them, and sometimes they're gamers themselves, and sometimes they bring this stuff up and they actually believe it because it's just like in the public consciousness, even though it's like complete bullshit. And I feel like the kind, the same kind of thing has happened kind of with like hate what people think hate is and how people take like threads on the internet seriously um i've recently been in a um in an event for journalists you know i'm in a kind of a journalist union and they had a kind of an event about it was termed violence digital violence and, and i was i was just there because i thought this is going to be interesting i wonder what these colleagues of mine have experienced and you know and there was nobody all of the the people who were talking at this event nobody I, sadly you couldn't like it was kind of like a zoom meeting but like they didn't let just like you know viewers directly ask questions otherwise i would have kind of grilled these people but like there was no actual violence like these people were complaining about like nasty emails and, and what really surprised me <laughs> is that um, there was a, there's a, you know, you know how I, I've, I've talked about this on the show a lot, how I, you know, what my attitude to what fact check is, but like there was a, there was a, a um, somebody who works at one of the largest like fact checking websites in Germany. <laughs> and uh, uh, he was saying that like in the last three months, the f I think he was talking about five people in his team or whatever, got like 300 hate mails. And from what he was saying about what they hate, what the, in air quotes, hate was, there were just nasty emails. Like, you know, there was maybe one death threat or two and they, they actually, you know, that's actually, you know, that's crime. You report that to the police and that's a whole different topic. But like um, all the other emails were just nasty emails. And I was amazed that, was only 300 for five people in three months because when i you know I, I used to work for heiser i should still write for them but you know heiser in germany is a, is a technology um uh, uh publishing company and they have a very famous forum the forum's been around for i don't know 15 years 20 years um and it's it's a it's a famously these days you would say toxic forum um, like if you if you write an article for 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 Heiser Online and some people and, you know people don't like it they always call you like oh what has the intern done and shit like if and I I used to write columns like not, not columns like um I, yeah basically in English you would call it a column and in in, in 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 Germany you would call it commentary like basically an opinion piece I would write like an op ad right I would write an op ad and I really like to do that and the point about an op ad you know is to you want to get interaction you want to kind of polarize and. Um, and I, I think I was quite kind of good at that. Um, so um, while I was at Heiser, actually, one of my op ads was the uh, broke the record for the most comments in the forum. And uh, I mean, when I wrote a, like one of these pieces, I would get like three hundred, what these people would call hate emails, just just emails on this one op ad, right? And if I wrote like three in three months or like even six, you can imagine the amount of emails. And that was on top of the normal hate mail I just got for just writing news, right? And and I, I put hate mailing, of course, but because that's really not, it's like just people telling you, oh, you're a fucking idiot, you're dumb, you made a grammar mistake here, you're an idiot. 
And the amazing thing, what I would have liked to talk about with these other journalists is um, that whenever I wrote back to somebody and I said, you know, yes, I made a grammar mistake there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but it happens. Everybody makes a mistake. I'm sure, I don't know what your job is, but I, I think, you, you know, if a plumber or whatever, I'm, I'm sure you make mistakes in your job as well. Um, at least I don't make toilets overflow, whatever. And without fail, I, I shit you not, I must have written thousands of these emails while I was at Heise. Um, I think, except, okay, let's accept 10, 10, 10, like 90% of the time I got an answer back where the people realized, oh, this is a human being. Uh, I'm, and, and then they apologized. Um, and then there was maybe like 9% I would I would estimate where I just didn't get an answer at all. And then there was like, literally like a handful of people who would just wrote back and doubled down on the insults. Uh, but that was a very, very uncommon occurrence. Usually these people, I realized very quickly, especially also in the forum, if the same thing, they just attack you violently, like violently in air quotes, like, you know, verbally, um, like really, really, really mean comments. And then you write back and they, in the moment you write back, they're like, oh shit, somebody's actually reading this. Oh my God, this is an actual person. And f almost all of the time, they're like, this is some kind of apology forthcoming where they're like, I'm sorry. Um, I, d I just wanted to let off steam or whatever. And I think that's a huge part of stuff on the internet. Like that, that's a huge part of the culture. And going back to like on the internet, even today, right? and going back, because on the internet, you can do that. Like how many... If you're just a normal person and you work in an office job or you work on in some kind of you you work at a cash register at the supermarket, right? Or whatever. Um, how many times do you have an interaction with somebody where you're like, oh, this is a fucking idiot? And I would like to tell him this, but because I'm in my job and I really can't like I can't like let out those feelings. And I think a lot of people just do that on the internet because then, you know, they're kind of anonymous and they can do that. And this is Getting back to the Dragon Lord, I think that's just how the internet works. But if you then make the mistake, so you have your YouTube channel, you you are front and center, or you're a journalist and you're writing on your blog, whatever, and people do this kind of stuff, and you make the mistake, like you can basically do any, you can just ignore it. Like that's that's a valid approach. You can just let all of that go into black hole, just death null every, just death null the emails. Doesn't matter. That's totally fine. But if, I mean, we're not talking emails, we're doing YouTube comments, right? But if you start blocking these people, um, then you start kind of like this escalation, right? These people will create other accounts. And it's, I mean, you, you can answer them. Okay, if you're really big, you can't do that because you get so many comments that you can't do that. But the other the other method is just to ignore them. But if you do the thing that Drahndort did, which was, I think, his great mistake, this is what caused everything. When you actually... Re I'm streaming now, right? I got somebody in Twitch chat who's saying, you're full of shit, this is all bullshit. And if I then ignore them, that's fine. If I argue with them, that's also okay because they su suddenly, most of the time, if they're not like 100% trolling, you know, they really realize, hey, we're, we're getting, um, he's not of my, we have different opinion, but you know, he is interacting with me. Like he's taking me as a value, like he's he's respecting me a little bit. Um, of course, if they're completely trolling, you'll figure that out pretty easily and then you just ignore them. But if you ban them and then go, no, you're a fucking idiot because, and then you make fun of them, but you've banned them, you've taken their ability to let out, let off their steam, then they get really mad. And if you do this a lot of time and your content is really shit, this will escalate to a point where people visit you at your house, which is what happened to Dranlon. Anyway, why are we talking about this? Because this is a very important turning point, I think, for what hate speech is because... Um, so we have this guy who had people turning up at his house. Um, he reacted to this very violently by shouting at them, throwing shit at them, and, uh, in several instances, actually hurting these people. Um, so there was a court case. He was actually convicted a few years ago for, you know, uh, I think, uh, assault, uh, and something else. And, um, he actually got off in Germany, usually, 
um, if you do, <laughs> like if you assault somebody and you're like an upstanding citizen and you you are in front of the judge and you're kind of acting, you know, you're kind of like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this. Then usually you get like you know a few months of jail time, but you you always get it like on probation. So so a few years ago, Drachenlord got this. Um, got sentenced and he and he got probation. So everything returned to normal. He was still at his house, you know, people still doing the same thing. And actually in within in his probation period, um he assaulted people. Um, you know, some of them went onto his, you know, the, on onto his we talked about the Drachenschanze, his house, and it went onto his property. Um, but still, you know, I mean there's a, such a thing as self-defense, but usually you know, you're supposed to call the police and wait for the police to turn up. And if these people are not like threatening your life, you're not you're not allowed to just hit them in the face with <laughs> with uh, um, um, uh, um, you know a flashlight, which is what he did. And like in this one case, which you know the he got a second trial for. So trial was a conglomeration of several things, but that was one of them. He was actually on his property, and the the hater in air quotes probably a real hater, I don't know. By all accounts, pretty much of an idiot, but we'll get into this later. So on the other side of the fence, so he was outside of his property, and Herr Winkler hit him with a flashlight through the fence in on his head. So he had to, like, actually had to have, I think, stitches. Um, and so that because he used the flashlight, it's actually aggravated assault. Um, and this was one of the things, while he had another trial um there were several other things like insulting the police because he was always called the police he'd call the police like three times a day and you know they they took like, they have to go like four like you know now he doesn't live there anymore but he they had to go like 40 minutes to get there right and getting called there like and it's like a small town a small place in bavaria right and they've got other shit to do so sometimes it took him like an hour to get there um, at which point he would be on stream and like saying, oh, the police don't do their job. They're all idiots. I know these guys, they're not helping me, um, which is actually what he also got convicted for. And this was in October. Um, the first time I talked about this guy and the court case was after the first sentence. So he actually got sentenced um, to two years in prison, which he didn't ex ex accept and he appealed. And also the... Um, uh, the prosecution also appealed because they wanted him to go to jail for longer. And I've mentioned this before. We now had the second court case, which is what we're going to talk about today, um, which resulted in something which I would like to call uh, the Lex Draconis. Or I think it's actually Lex Draconis, if I remember my Latin correctly, um, Lex Legis. Um, but, you know, the I would like call this the law of the dragon um because what happened now is that actually um in this so this this the, the case was appealed so it went to a higher court and um he actually got one year on probation so from two years in jail remember this is his second um conviction for pretty much the same thing you know assault and stuff he got one year on probation again. Um, now, this verdict isn't final because the prosecution has initiated a revision. Um, so in Germany, um, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, but usually it works like this. If this is a criminal case, of course, um, in criminal law, it works like this. You have a trial. Um, you can appeal that. It goes to the next higher court and then the decision is final but you can go into revision. And revision is, like, this was an appeal, so this was a different court, and they called, but they called witnesses, and they redid the whole trial. Now, the revision is is not the same thing. A revision is just uh, a judge from a different court, uh, there's special, like, revision courts, looks at this verdict and looks at any errors that were committed. And these are, like, only process errors, right? And if there is significant cause because like the court that made this decision made a mistake, then uh, the sentence over overturned. And I think that means it goes back 
uh, there, there has to be a completely different trial then. I think it has to be retrialed. I think on the on the second higher level again. But I actually don't know about this. But this is very unlikely. Pretty much all legal experts think that, I mean, this was the prosecution. Uh, but pretty much all legal experts uh, I've heard and seen on the internet and, and actually talked to um, think that this is very unlikely that they, the judge actually, and the court didn't make any, like, process error. So this verdict is probably going to stand. So this means that Drachno doesn't have to go to jail. Um, this is very interesting because of several things. Usually in Germany, it's very, very... So if you get convicted for something and 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 you're, you don't have to go to jail, you're on probation, and then you're convicted again for the same thing, it is highly unlikely. It happens, but it's highly unlikely that you get probation a second time. Usually for that... Um, you have to uh, demonstrate that you're an upstanding citizen and you were trying and you're changing, right? But there are several factors here why this is this is incredible that, uh, in my opinion, and I'm no lawyer, obviously, uh, but just as, as an observer, observer, it's kind of um, amazing that he got a, um, a probation for a second time because, first of all, um, as was demonstrated in both of these, like the first trial, you know, the second trial, and then the retrial we just had now, like last month, um, it was in 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 both hearings. It was demonstrated that that he didn't actually fulfill any of his probation requirements of his first probation, which included, you know, like social service work. And actually, a psychological uh, analysis, and he just went there once, I think. Um, so the uh, the um, prosecution actually called him a uh, uh, um, how, how did they term it? Uh, Bewährungsversager, uh, a, a probation failure because he didn't fulfill his probationary things. And then, which the first judge actually um, noted, and which is why she actually. Um, you know, uh, the, the, actually in her sentence no, noted this, that this conviction, like, what, so he was actually um, convicted for assault and a few weeks later, this case, ha so the, the one of the things that was that was on trial here, like hitting that one guy with a flashlight, actually happened. So that was in his probationary period for assault, he hit another guy. So it's usually it's highly unlikely that you get probation twice. Usually it never happens if you actually, you know, f twice for the same thing. And then if you actually did it, like, I don't know, there's really no way to demonstrate that you changed, right? Um, I mean... I haven't seen the the protocol. I don't think it's out yet from the second, um, you know, trial. But like, I can only imagine the court um, said there like extenuating circumstances because he's been hounded by people and like his whole internet presence and all of that. Um, yeah, but like, anyway, that that it's it seems to be highly highly irregular. But that's that's what what happened. Um, I think he mostly um, got off this time because um, two of the witnesses that, that were there in the first trial uh, behaved very badly during this trial. Um, one of them, so he, he made his appearance in court as a witness and was already, like, even in the first trial, if you read the protocol, he was like, the judge was asking him how, how much he had drunk that day and he was obviously lying and then the judge caught him in a lie and all that. So he already made a bad impression. But this time he also made a bad impression. Then he went outside of the courtroom and there were obviously people there gathering. There was a German YouTuber, another German YouTuber, um, who was drinking with some fans and they actually gave him some alcohol and he like completely got drunk apparently. Um, then the police, because they were being drunk and very loud in front of the court, said, you have to leave the premises of the court. And he resisted and apparently actually hurt a policeman. So they so they bundled him into a police car and actually arrested him. 
and he's actually going to face charges. Um, now, this was while this was happening, the actual case was still going on, and the police communicated to the judge that this had just happened. So that obviously re re destroyed the whole reputation of that witness. So his ca his thing, so Winkler actually didn't got com uh, convicted for like hitting him with a with a flashlight, and one of the other witnesses, or you know the haters. Um, hater witnesses uh, also behaved very badly apparently so this seems to be a significant um influence on this case like why why it happened this way and so because he only got like one year of jail time in total most of this is from insulting the police which pretty much all stands um if if probation is under two years then the court doesn't even have to argue. usually the court has to argue basically to the public why they don't put this guy in jail, right? Um, but under two years, they don't even have to do that. So he's just off on probation. Um, which, yeah, is um, is interesting. Um, especially since, you know, he was on probation before and didn't fulfill his probationary requirements. Um, but, like, the most curious thing that came out, I mean, there, there are some kind of protocols from people, like, basically from the hater community who were in attendance, that's kind of the only protocols we have because the, the official court transcript isn't out yet. Um, Astro C, hello. Uh, Astro C in, in Twitch said, why does everybody in trial sound like an asshole? Because they are, right? So, I mean, if you just want to hear my opinion, I think in this whole situation, everybody is at fault. <laughs> I mean, I am... I'm not subscribing to the general public view that 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 is that is being perpetuated in the mass media that Rainer Winkler Drachenlord is just a victim. He's not a victim. He's caused this. This is legitimately his community. He's kind of bred this community for 10 years. Um, he 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 managed to get the most toxic community on YouTube in Germany and he's worked very hard on this whole situation. On the other hand, the people in this community, not all of them, I mean, there are some really nice people that are just saying, you know, they're just making YouTube videos, right? They're just commenting. Um, so so Rainer releases one of his shitty videos that are really, sh I mean, they they have shit content, they look like shit, they're just shit all over the place. And then somebody just, you know, comments on it. They do reaction videos. And then some of these people are just, you know, really good people they're just normal people they're just we don't like this shit and we want to give our opinion we can't give our opinion to Rainer because he just blocks us so we make our own youtube channel i think that's okay you know and you know a lot of the people also the the view of like the haters are all evil and the actual haters like you know thousands of people went to his house in the last few years and like i would probably from having seen a lot of videos you know, these people also record videos and, you know, Rainer just shouting at them and, and, and throwing stuff at them. And a lot of these people, like maybe 80 to 90 percent, are just normal fucking, you know, teenagers or people in their 20s, like students. They just go there for a laugh, right? They just go there one afternoon, they drink a few beers. The police turns up, says, you know, just leave this guy alone and they just leave. And they never turn up again. And as legitimately people just walked past to got like shouted at by this guy. Or like people on there, they were just on a on a bicycle trip and you know, he's like, get off my fucking uh So they just stopped to drink some water and he's just like, get off my fucking uh property. And they're like, we're on the other side of the road. We're not on your property. And there's some people who just went there to just, like, you know, talk to the guy. Which, you know, I, if you're a public figure and you just put your address out on the internet and you keep doing it. It wasn't that one time I, I talked about this. He kept doing this. He invited people to his fucking poster sales. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's a very toxic community. And, uh, you know, they're not, like, many people... There are probably aren't assholes, but there are definitely some assholes. And, you know, some of the the guys in this in this case, um, I think you could argue were assholes. And and he's an asshole. So it's like the only people in this whole trial that I can understand are the prosecution, which is just like usually I'm not a fan of the you know, I, I understand the police has to do their job, but you know, I I I'm not a I wouldn't go on the record saying I'm a fan of the police. I'm not a fan of like 
generally prosecuting people but the state has like state has to keep order and they're just trying to, like you can't go around hitting people you can't just go come to me come to my house and i'm gonna 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 hit you in the face and then people do that and then you hit them in the face which is now where we come to the most interesting part of this whole new trial which is exactly that because that exactly was the defense of Rainer Winkler's defender who I think was just like a, an unpaid like you know when you get a oh god would you um, now I have to look this up uh, in Germany you call it a Pflichtverteidiger uh, Pflichtverteidiger what's what's the term Pflichtverteidiger and so on I mean, public defender yeah um, you know when you just get a you don't you don't pay the pay your lawyer uh, the state does so uh, his defense which was new in this he didn't bring that up in the first case but apparently from what I know from the case and this is like actually the press reporting this so I, I think this is this is real that there was a reporter I follow on Twitter who was um, who was in the in the in the trial um, so his lawyer's defense was that um oh actually i put in the i, I see now i made a mistake in the in the show notes i'll have to actually put for some reason i, I wrote aggravated manslaughter which is of course wrong that that would be much worse i don't think there is a, such a thing as aggravated um manslaughter what i meant was aggravated assault so let's fix that Live on the show here. Um, I, you know, I you can you can see everything. You can see how the sausage is made, <laughs> and here. Um, anyway, um, yes. So so his defense uh, was, look, this guy Rainer, Mister Drachenort, um, says in his inter internet videos, you're a fucking moron. If you come to my house, I fucking hate you. If you come to my house, I'm gonna hurt you, right? I'm gonna I'm going to bash your face in. And if you then go to his house and you get face bashed in, you can't bring charges and you can't complain about this. Now, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, um, but this is a legit legal concept, uh, at least in German law. It's probably in, in, in pretty much any jurisdiction because let's take the, a typical example. If you're a professional boxer and you enter a boxing competition, and you box with somebody, and they fucking break your jaw. You can't go to the police and say, I wanna I want this guy booked for assault. He broke my fucking jaw. Right? The police and the law in the state will say, Well, when you entered into this boxing competition, you um had reason you had to have the reasonable assumption that you know you hurt people, you get hurt. So now you can't like there you can't bring legal charges, right? If the guy had a a piece of metal in his glove, maybe, but this is like, you know, normal, you know, within the rules boxing. That makes sense. But to apply this, and the judge apparently followed this argument from what we can tell, that's just insane, right? I mean, I've had my share of, you know, what Drachenlord would call haters in the past. You know, I've, I did a Linux podcast for seven years, um, if you think, you know, I mean, if you, if you think any, like, <laughs> I wouldn't call it a toxic community, but some people would like the Linux community can be incredibly like antisocial and, and, and just like mean spirited about like tiny things, like literally about text editors or like fucking, you know, kernel parameter. Like it can like, I, I got some hate. Back at it. like people, I wouldn't call it hate. I would just call it mean spirited uh, feedback, <laughs> probably. So I, 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 I was okay. I can deal with that. But like, you know, if if somebody writes me about this, like you know, I'm posting this, I'm recording this on Twitch, I'm posting this on YouTube, and then somebody in the YouTube comment goes, "You fucking idiot! I'm you, you think Drachen, Drachenlord is, is a poor victim, and you're just an evil man, and." Do you want to you see what happens if I turn up like with 100 people at your house, right? And I go, well, if you do that, if you come to my house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just bash your face in, right? <laughs> Which, you know, I would actually probably do if you turn up to my house. <laughs> um, 
and 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 unlike unlike Drachenlord, I think I could actually um you know make good on that threat a bit better than like a 250 kilo guy, right? Um especially since I've been doing a lot of kickboxing training in the last two years. But all right. But like if I did that, right? If I said this here in, in the stream on, on the podcast, I say, if you come up, turn up to my house, I'm going to fucking kick your head in. And then I do that. And I, I get like the police comes and like fucking cites me and I get like a court case. And my lawyer says, well, he told everybody he's going to do this. You can't really come like you. It's not the same as a boxing competition, right? Um, I'm not saying it is right for people to turn up at his house. It might not be illegal if they're on the other side of the road and they're just shouting at his house. I mean, it's Ruhestörung, like disturbing the peace, right? But he can call the police and then they'll send these people away, right? So it's not like, even if they break into, if you, even if it's breaking and entering and they break into his property, if if his life or like my property, if my, you know, if my life is not at on at under threat and I can't like in the court case with the reasonable, like, you know, so if I can't show that I was afraid for my life, then it's like not self-defense. And he actually, like the funny thing is from the beginning in, especially in this case, like in this, in this second trial, retrial, uh, Winkler and his uh, defendant said, well, it, no, it's not self-defense. We're, we're not even claiming that. And there's legitimate, like, so, like there's a, there's a famous case in Germany, um, where um, so there was like a Hell's Angels case where like the police did a night raid and busted some Hell's Angels guy's door down, and he was I think with his girlfriend in the upstairs bedroom, and he was like um, I think he was a, um, like in a gun club, so he was like sports shooting, so he had a license. Um, to have a gun. I think it was a shotgun. I'm not quite sure. I think it was a shotgun. And I think, um, so he heard somebody break into his house and and the police um, like was coming up the stairs and he shot through the door and killed a police officer. And he actually got off scot-free. He didn't even get convicted because he was able to like, the police, like, he was saying, I don't know who it was. They didn't say they were the police. Somebody was breaking in, right? I had my gun. I was afraid of my life. Um, they were breaking in the bedroom door. So I just shot. I was panicking. I shot the bedroom door. And the judge actually followed that and said, yes. So the police has to actually uh, demonstrate that they actually uh, told him that it was the police. And, of course, they said that, but they couldn't prove it. So... You know, there is actually, you know, it's it's not kind of like the stand your ground law, or whatever, like in the US. But, you know, there is there are cases in, in, in German law where and in German like um, previous like court decisions where like self-defense has been upheld. Like if you can actually say, well, I, I was legitimately afraid of my life. You could do that. But like he wasn't even claiming that. Like his defense is he told everybody he's going to he's going to hurt them and then if they turn up at his place, he is allowed to hurt them. Like, I mean, German law isn't like, you know, it's like Roman-based law, so it's not as precedent-based as the UK style of legal system, which, you know, obviously is also um, practiced over in the US, where this kind of decision uh, would, would be much more dangerous um, because... Um, you know, it, this would be a very dangerous precedent, pretty much. But even in Germany, this is kind of like somebody else can now claim this. Like, if this happens to me, like I, my lawyer could build my defense on. You know, he's kind. Of, he was known on the internet. He's kind of like the Drachenlord. Um, he was saying, like, he was, uh, you know, telling his community this, and that, that's just insane. That just shouldn't be a defense, right? And this is why I think this is this case and this whole case as not only in the court case but the whole drachenlord like magnus opum the whole the whole situation um is 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 very important like for society not only um because it's about what 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 is hate speech uh but also like how laws are enforced like what is allowed 
how you're allowed to react to it. Um, so as it stands right now, this kind of decision to me kind of means like, yeah, in Germany, you're totally okay with like building a building a career. Like this guy makes his money off insulting people on the internet. Um, and then if they turn up because you just bl block them everywhere, if they can turn up, you can actually get a, take your mag light and fucking bash, bash their heads in. Uh, because you told them before that this is kind of the uh, I mean this is not literally what the the judge said and probably not what he intended with his with his verdict right but this is kind of what it communicates to the public certainly the press is you know the press largely says oh he's a poor victim and uh, you know it's good that he didn't go to jail um, it would have been a scandal if he went to jail. Um, I kind of feel like it's a scandal that he didn't have to go to jail uh, because of the aforementioned reasons. You know, I'm I'm really okay with him getting prob probation the second time if he was actually at least like if if any if in any part of his public persona on YouTube uh, you could tell that he was actually that this changed anything about him. But he, he is still saying the same things. He still thinks like he's right. And like these people are all like fucking idiots. And, and he actually calls them idiots. He, he, ta he actually he keeps taunting them. He keeps telling them, you know, now that he's driving around in his car, like, come find me. He literally says that in his fucking live streams. And then he complains when people like, you know, post videos of him where he is. It's just like, he hasn't learned like he at all and i i feel like you know i don't know um part of the part of the part of why we have laws and why we send people to jail is that you know to enforce understanding because generally as a grown up person you should realize that just hitting people uh w with heavy objects um you know, there, there can be an argument that sometimes it nece it's necessary, especially if you have to defend your life. But, like, you have to understand that it has consequences. And and, and I feel like this in this case, that that is not happening. Um, you know, I don't know if he has to go to jail because of that. But, like, he's just, like, flaunting the... Like, Germany is very lenient with this kind of thing. Like, in the UK, he probably would have been in jail immediately after the first... Like, there's, there wouldn't have been any probation for this kind of thing. Um... And Germany is generally very lenient. But, you know, that also, like, that comes with the, like, because we're trying we're trying not to punish people. We don't send them to jail to punish them. We want to send them to jail to teach them a lesson so that we can integrate them into society again. Or not send them to jail and, like, put them on probation if we think, you know, they that's better for them. But that, that has to go with a kind of, like, you have to follow your fucking probation requirements then like if you just ignore that you're kind of sending the message well you know i'm above and that's like the message he's sending to everybody i'm like fucking youtuber dude i'm above everybody else right if it was just like a random guy who hit his neighbor with with his like flashlight and then you know it, within the probation period did the whole same thing again a judge would probably have said you know you're going to jail now but because he's a YouTuber and has haters and hate speech, um, that's not happening. Anyway, that's that was the um, that was the update. Um, yeah, um, kind of looks like to me that this guy now has a free pass, and he can just you know be, if he says if he if he announces it on the internet beforehand, he can just keep hitting people and get away scot free. I don't know. That's that's the takeaway I'm taking from. It's probably not fair. Um, but it's it's kind of the message it's sending. Um, before um, I'm going to wind up this episode, I'm going to give you a, a, an update of, of what Rainer, Rainer is up to now after the, because the, the court case has been, uh, has been a while ago. Uh, what What's happening now? Because it's just getting more crazy. So this isn't over. Like there'll be, like this will end up in front of the judge again sooner or later. There will be more precedents. There's probably going to be a law uh, going to be passed at some point because of this guy. I don't think it's going to be beneficial, you know, 
beneficial for society as a whole. But I think that's why we also, aside from it being very entertaining and a lot of drama, I feel like it's kind of important to to f keep following the story. <laughs> The rest just Jim comments Germany is forgiving as long as you don't destroy property while hitting while hurting people. Actually, he did break somebody's glasses and he actually um hit a car. Um you know, I, I know I know what you're what you're commenting on there. Sometimes the German legal system seems to be built about uh punishing uh the destruction of property more than hurting people but i think that is generally a a factor of um <laughs> i mean you can have like lots of people have like a a capitalism um critique attached to that i think it's a generally a factor of provability um because if you generally if you if you've been to court and if you've, you've sat in a few court cases especially criminal cases where people like hit each other It's like it's always one against the other. Like there's often it's a problem of like proving. It's the same problem with rape, um, you know, proving rape in German um, like jurisprudence and in German court cases. Like if you didn't as a woman immediately get a rape kit done uh, and you can't immediately prove it, there's often a situation where it's um, word against word. And because generally, luckily, we take... Uh, innocent until proven guilty seriously in Germany, if somebody says he did it and you say I didn't and that's the only information the court has, usually the court will decide for the uh, accused, uh, which I think is generally a good thing. Um, also, this I think some of this um, with the property uh, you know, being more serious comes from the fact that in a lot of cases that is civil law and you know the, the, the burden of proof in civil law is very different. Um, you know, and uh, people usually don't go to jail for that. They, most of the time, they just get fined heavily. Uh, but when it comes to going to jail, usually, um, I think, yeah, it's it's. I mean, it can happen for destroying property, but I think it's 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 less, um, less common. Generally, I think the German legal system is pretty good. Um, I think we have a pretty sane legal system. Um, I mean, we have a legal system where I think this is good. I personally think this is good. It's not jury based, right? It's it's a it's a judge and two lay judges, and in this case, um, they have had the same. Th their voices have the same weight, um, so you know this could also be the lay judges. I don't know, uh, but it's kind of like um, generally, it's a. I, I feel also very sane system. Generally, it it helps um, because the judge has so much say. Uh, it's often very good to like just like take down like dumb suits. Like there's a lot of um, like court cases you read about that like are brought in places like the U.S. that would never even like reach a German court because a German judge would even not even take the case because they would say this is idiotic. Like you know, a lot of that is yes, a lot of that is civil law, like the fucking uh, you know. Uh, court cases with the with the hot liquid and you know every every you know uh place now has to print like danger hot liquid on the mugs because they get otherwise they get sued in the US like in Germany that doesn't like if you if you buy like hot coffee and then you sue the place because you burned yourself a judge would say you're a fucking idiot you know you can't you can't sue somebody for that so generally I like the German legal system, but, you know, as with everything, there's a downside to everything. If judges have a lot of say, you can have situations like this, right? You can have judges who I think, I don't know if in this case somebody was influenced by the media coverage and actually thinks this guy was a victim, um, which is interesting because if you just, and I've talked about this before, if you just watch the stuff and read the stuff that is that that my colleagues, you know, in, in the in the for lack of a better term, mainstream media in the stuff that is read and seen by billions of people, um, if you just follow that, then you get the impression that this guy is a victim. If you supplement this and you're in a private citizen kind of 
way of thinking, you go, hey, let me do my own research. And you just go to his YouTube channel and you just watch like, I don't know, 10 hours of his videos. I probably not even that. You just probably have to watch two hours. Um, you will notice this pattern very quickly and you will realize that he actually makes money from fucking goading on these people. And that that is like that he just can't say I'm a victim. I mean, he is a victim, yes, but he's like, like in as I said, like th this is why I don't think this is bullying. A normal person, something happens, they get bullied, um, they figure out how they can get out of this situation. Any other person would say, "Hey, I don't like being bullied. I'm getting out of this situation." Um, this person said, "Hey, I'm getting bullied. I found a way." of getting paid for getting bullied, so I'm going to reinforce the bullies. That's basically what's happening here. Um, but anyway, what's she, what's she doing now? Um, I'm becoming... So the, the people who follow the haters, um, you know, the people who are in the what is what they call the, the, the game, the Drachen game, um, they keep referring to this whole thing as being scripted. They always say there's the script writers... And, you know, I'm starting to believe this because this is so unreal. So, you know, this guy had this whole thing happen with his fucking house where everybody turned up, where actually the the local government went and le went to him and said, let us just fi buy this fucking house. And they bought this fucking house. He took that money, paid off his debts, and then bought a huge car, a pickup truck, very visible pickup truck with the rest. Then he moved out. Uh, meanwhile, um, they've actually completely like flattened the house. The house has been demolished so that nobody turns up there anymore. Uh, the uh, the little village where he was living in with like the 40 people, which is actually now having peace and quiet, which is, which is great. Um, but now he's riding around in his fucking car that everybody knows. So everybody just keeps a lookout for this fucking car. And of course, he's posted his license plate on the internet. So everybody knows and they, they keep taking pictures. He says they're following him around. Um, largely there, I don't, I couldn't find any evidence of that. I think it's just people are like, oh, look, he's on the motorway. There's a blue uh, Ford uh, uh, a Ranger. <laughs> oh, it's his number plate. Let's take a picture or a video. Um, yeah, so he's in this situation. And now it turns out he now has a girlfriend. I mean, this is getting weirder and weirder. So apparently, um, you know, he got off on probation uh, he's, he's driving around still in his homeless lifestyle, um, which is, by the way, there's like all these, like the German, the, the, the German bureaucracy is usually very strict, right? And they seem to make all these exceptions for this guy. So, so apparently he's not paying taxes, which actually his probation officer said in the court case, nobody fucking cares. He doesn't have a place to live, so in Ger but he's driving around in his car. In, in Germany, if you have a driver's license um, and, you know, in a, a registration for your car, the registration for your car um, says your, has your address in it. So if you change your address, um, you actually have to go to the, uh, you know, to the car, government car people, um, the local branch, and you actually have to like re register with them. You say, I'm living in this town now. Usually you then, you, it used to be mandatory that you get different license plates. You, now you don't have to anymore. You can keep the old ones. So for example, I have Hamburg plates, even though I live in Dusseldorf. But I, you know, I, when I moved to Dusseldorf, I had to go to the local branch of the, you know, the car registry office and I have to give them my new address. And in Germany, you can't have a car you can't have a you can't have a license like your 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 ownership papers of the car if you don't have a uh, an address, and this guy doesn't have an address. He's homeless, so legally he's not allowed to have a car. Right. So legally, if he gets into a police, and the police obviously knows him, so they know this, and he's driving around where he lives. So I don't, you know, if the police stops him, and they get his license registration. Um, I mean, they don't obviously, they, they can't, in that moment, they can't know that he's homeless, right? But like, if they, if, if he gets a ticket, right, they send that to his address, to his old address, and that house doesn't exist anymore. So like, 
he wouldn't even get the ticket. He wouldn't be able to pay it. And then he would like, at some point they would like just get his license because they can't legally serve him papers because he doesn't have an address. Like any other person would get into huge trouble with this kind of shit. But that guy is just like, and everybody fucking knows. He's like posting this, saying this in videos. Everybody fucking knows that this, like the police probably knows, but nobody fucking cares. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like, you sit there as like a normal German person who's like an upstanding citizen, but like, even if you're an upstanding citizen in Germany, you get into trouble with the bureaucracy sooner or later. You know, for me, they, they fucking changed my name by accident or whatever. And then I had all kinds of trouble with my ID and all this kind of shit. So, you know, you always get these trolls. But this guy, apparently, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Anyway, now he's driving around. Um, so on the 1st of April, he actually uh, published a video on his YouTube channel with a woman in it. Um, and she's obviously voluntarily in this video. And he's, he said he's now engaged. Uh, apparently, that was a joke. But apparently he's together. He now has a girlfriend and she's with him. Um, he's talking like in his videos. Um, which is like weird. Of course, the so the community figured out where he was. So apparently she lives in Dortmund, which is on the other side of Germany uh, from where he is from uh, in Franconia. Um, Dortmund is close to where I live actually in the rural area. And um, relatively close. And they found his car. There was like this blue uh, Ford Ranger parked in Dortmund. Um, and he'd taken off his license plates because he didn't want them to find his girlfriend's house. Uh, but he'd forgotten. In Germany, we have a, a, an Umweltplakette. It's like this little thing that's on the front windshield um, that tells you what kind of EU um, like emission class your vehicle is because the police checks that when you drive into certain areas for example the rural area you have to get have a green number four uh sticker and that has the license plate of the car on it so he, he didn't take that off because you can't so people were like okay this is his car and then like 24 hours later after people posting this on the internet they turned up at his girlfriend's house and she actually came out of the house and talked to them whatever and then and then they published this video and now it's out of the bag. Apparently, like, I don't know. It's very curious to me how another person can, like, you know, I, I don't know. Love, you can't judge love. Uh, I've certainly learned this uh, in my life that uh, in Germany we have a, we have a saying, wo die Liebe hinfällt, where love drops. Like, you can't choose. You can't choose who you love. So, you know, I don't want to judge that. Um, but, like, how you can, like, why is she, like, in... Like, she must know this, like, fucking hell this guy's been going through for the last 10 years. It's public knowledge. Like, why would you insert yourself in that? Like, it's 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 one thing of, like, being his girlfriend and probably sheltering him in your house because he doesn't have a fucking place to live. But just park the car somewhere else. And why did you just fucking publish a video? And now you're in the videos. Like, what the fuck? And, of course, people immediately, like, she's on Facebook. What the, f like, people immediately figure out her name, where she works, everything. Of course, because she wasn't careful, you know, before, because she didn't know this was going to happen. Like a normal person. It's just amazing. Um, so that, that is, that is amazing. Like, that is like weird, but also like, I don't know how this lifestyle is gonna, gonna work with like his probation, like one of his probation, um, prerequisites now apparently is he has to, whenever he changes where he is, he has to tell his probation officer. I don't even know how he does this because he just travels around in his fucking car and sleeps in hotels. Um, Mark my words, this is going to end up in front of another judge. There's going to be some some shit. I mean, he's going to... At, at some at some point, he's going to run over somebody. Like, the people were figuring out where he was in Dortmund because he was posting pictures. And then it was at a well-known landmark. And then it turned up. <clears throat> and they were like kind of like, you know... I hear. They weren't even doing bad. They were just saying, hello, you know, whatever... Actually, the guys, the the video I saw from the guy, the guys that 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 went to where he was, I published a video, and they were like, "We're fans, we're fans, we're not haters." And he just like drove away in his car very quickly and actually reversed into a 
some kind of a bench like where people can sit on because it was a lamb or whatever but like the way he drives off when just people come say hello it's just like very worrying he's gonna run over some something is gonna happen and and this this whole thing is gonna i'm gonna stay on the story of course um because i mean i'm gonna stay on this anyway privately because it's like <laughs> the most interesting thing that's happening on the german internet for years um, but I also think it's very important. Uh, like it's this is gonna. Be, I mean, to to put a bow on this episode, if I could, if I should just say, like, if if everything continues, um, as I see it going, right, where we have a a public that generally believes that he's a victim and he's just being bullied, and they don't understand how, like, this is maybe the methods of the people against him are bullying. Um, you know, a lot of it is just trolling, which is different, but like people don't understand that. Um, and people don't understand internet culture. And I feel e even like I'm going to be an old man now, young people that were born like after 2000, whatever, um, largely also don't understand it. They're on the internet all day, but like they don't understand internet culture. I feel like, they don't understand the thing I mentioned earlier where, um, you know, people being mean-spirited on the internet, you know, p people saying things that they don't really mean. And if you actually take the time of talking to them, you figure that out. But people don't do that anymore these days. They just block. And, you know, because of all the other laws I've talked about, you know, free speech, cancel culture, all these topics I've talked about on the show, um, we have a... Um, we have a... Um, a movement and, and and these these big tech companies and social networks um, that are generally just on the on on the like on the, I mean in some cases they're pushed there by legislation in other cases I think it's a cultural thing they're generally just on the like delete everything block everything uh, decide that this is a fake news and and that is hate speech and they they even like the people running these internet services I feel don't understand this internet culture, which is just the thing. I mean, culture is, is a weird way of saying it. That's the best way I have. It's not really a culture. It's just a way of communicating. They don't understand the medium, right? They don't understand. Um, and it's not that, it's not also not so much that people are anonymous. I mean, we had these fucking stupid ideas in Germany where we want Klarnamenspflicht, where everybody has to put their like real name on the internet which is an incredibly stupid idea. That's not going to change anything. The problem is you're in front of a screen. You're in front of a screen and you're reading something, you're watching something and you're reacting to it and you don't have the filters that you have in real life. And I've, I've like, I figured this out ages ago when I started doing podcasts because people will write something to you in email or whatever and it'll be completely different. I mean, I've, I've I've been at events, like with Linux Outlaws, we did our own events and I did live shows and people react to stuff very differently when they see you. Um, it's the same with comedy and stuff like that. It's like um, when they just have a screen, they just, they just, they're more, people tend to write what they think. And I, 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 I've always maintained, and I believe this to this day, um, that this commenting you get on the internet um, is m that is closer to human nature than actual people interacting with each other in flesh and blood. Because I think that is more like stream of consciousness. That's more people writing down the emotions and the thoughts that they have in that moment. Um, I think in real life, we've learned, and we learned this very early on in childhood, um, we learn to filter that and to think about that and not say everything we think. I've always been somebody who is very candid and who says a lot of things that they th that I think, which I always, I know how that, like, people don't react to that very well. Um, because of that, lots of people actually, you know, I've, I've had this time and time again. You know, I've, I've been at an event and I've actually met people and, you know, we'd been at a Linux conference or, like, even like a podcast live show. And then in the evening we'd, we'd go to a pub and, you know, we'd, we'd drink some beers and then three, four beers in a person would say to me, Fab, I want to, I have to tell you this. Um, you're actually a nice guy. <laughs> I thought you were an asshole. 
And I figured out that this is often because I tend to think what I, I say, what I think. And people often like take this direct approach personal. Um, and I think I actually, um, I, you know, I, I mean ill against them, which I actually don't do, you know. And then if you actually talk to me a lot, like in, in personal exchange, they figure out, oh, well, he's actually quite a, quite a nice guy. It's weird. And I think this is kind of like, most people are not like that. Like most people have heavy filters on what they say. Um, and that's what we learn. Like, you know, this is why children often, you know, when you, when you look at children and they, when they're younger, they, they, they say what they, they think. Right. So my grandmother always tells the story of me, like being, I don't know, five, six years old. And we went to a, um, a fast food place, um, which, I mean, I can say this, the guy's long dead. Um, this was like an, in Germany, we call them imbus, like, you know, a diner. Um, and we, we went there because this guy had the best French fries, like in, in, in hundreds of kilometers around. He was amazing. He, but he was a very, very, very fat guy. Um, and, but he had amazing French fries, but you know, he was just very, he, he since died. He died of a heart attack, of course, uh, because of like uh, arterial, like clogging his, in his arteries, which was no surprise to anybody. I mean, I think the guy died in the nineties or whatever, but like, you know, my grandmother always tells the story, how I'm like little small fab sitting like in the, I, I think I was at on her hand. And like, I, I, I told her, I, I said like, I've, you know, Grandma, I figured out why this guy is so fat. He really likes his own French fries. You know, and then it was like one of these situations where everyone was like, uh, did you just say that? And then it's just everybody, including the guy, just laughed because it's kind of true. And it's just a kid. And your kid, kids can get away with that, right? But like when we grow up, we, we realize that we have to build in these filters. But I think on the internet, largely, you know, of course, also reinforced by being kind of anonymous or whatever. Um, but I don't think that's the reason. Um, people are more like that. They don't have any filters. And this is why a lot of this stuff comes out. Um, and a lot of people are just frustrated, right? A lot of these, you know, um, there are a lot of frustrated people, which I can understand. I'm frustrated a lot of the time. with just like life and people being idiots. You know, it's just like, Every day, literally almost every day now, I have to deal with some company. And it's always the same thing. It's like I have a email slash meeting slash telephone call with a company. I talk to them. I, I'm like, this is this is our deal. I pay you money, you do this, or they pay me money, I do this. Everybody agrees. We go away. And then either I, you know, I do what, what I said and then they get back to me like, this is not what we discussed or like they should do something and they don't just don't do it. And I'm like, fucking, why didn't you do this? Oh, we never talked about it. You never said we should do this. I'm like, I got the fucking email right here. What, what are you talking about? Like, I have this every day. So I know people are just mad. And of course, harkening back to my earlier point about journalists getting a lot of this. I mean, of course they do. That's what we do. As a journalist, you know, you have the privilege, and I would actually call this, this an actual privilege, of writing, talking, being seen by a lot of people, right? And the more people there are, the more hate mail you're probably going to get, like, you know. Um, but you're presenting your opinion to hundreds of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And you're essentially telling them what to think, right? People say, eh, it's not really what journalists, but that's what largely happens. And these days it's, it's very clear. Like these days, a lot of articles are like, oh, you shouldn't do this. And, and this is why you thinking this is wrong, <laughs> you know? So you do something like this, you will have people who don't agree with you and they will be mean, especially on the internet. And that's, you just got to have to live with that, right? I'm not saying them threatening to kill you should be like, like that should be allowed. And it's not, I don't, I don't understand why they're hate speech laws because that's a crime. And that has always been a crime. Um, you know, you can, you, that, that's literally you go to the police and they literally have to figure out who these people are and they will like, Unless you're take 
your time because we don't have mass data retention anymore, which is good. But like, you know, I mean, the the police, if everything goes to, goes like it should, you go to the police, you say, this guy threatened my life. This is his email, whatever. They go to this internet provider or his email provider, whatever. They figure out who the guy is. They go to Twitter. Um, actually, in this, <laughs> in this um, round table, basically, with the journalists, there was a... Um, a state prosecutor there. And he said that he thinks it's amazing how many people actually do this stuff with their real names and it's like really easy to track them down. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's already a crime. Like, we don't need fucking hate speech laws. And I mean, but there's a difference between like, yes, I think you should go to the police and that shouldn't be allowed and people should be prosecuted for that. But to believe, like, the problem is that a lot of these journalists believe these, the guy actually meant that. Like, the, when he was going to threaten to rape you or kill you, they're like, oh, my God, he's actually going to rape me. Like, he wants to do that. No, they're just saying that, like, most of the time, that and unless you have some really mad, you know, crazy people, which also happens, but it's, you know, very uncommon. Usually, they just want to get under your skin, right? And and the the state prosecutor said this as well. Like, most of these people, when when the, when the police actually tracks them down, most of the time, already when they get served the papers to go to court, they're already, oh my god, shit, I didn't mean that. And then when they're in court, like, almost all of these people, like, I mean, he says there's two kinds of people, right? There's the ones who go, like, and these are in the majority, who go, like, oh my god, I didn't mean this. And they, they actually, this is when the legal system works, and they realize that they did the mistake. And they're probably never, ever going to do that again, because they just had, like, they probably got off, but they had to stand in front of a judge, right? And And any normal person will then, like, reconsider their life choices unless there's somebody like Drahnlord or the haters who then don't and get drunk and piss in front of the court or whatever and get arrested. Um, but, like, normal people, and, and you know, this, this, this prosecutor also said, okay, there's the other kind of people who don't, um, who still think they're right, and that's when the legal system basically can't do anything. Like, you can lock them up, but then they get back out. And, uh, I mean, I that's that's the counter-argument with Drachenlord. If they'd locked him, lock him up for two years, he probably wouldn't even realize. He would come out after two years, and he'd still think he's, like, completely right, and everybody else is completely wrong. Like, he's beyond... I don't know if he's too dumb. They actually had a... Um, uh, um, a psychological evaluation done of him where they actually said he's he's below average intelligence i don't know what that means but, but like it could be or he's just too stubborn i don't know but you know in that case you can't really do anything but like it's gonna be it's gonna be um it's gonna be a problem i, I feel because you have you have you have the media who doesn't understand the internet doesn't understand the culture um, you now have judges who don't understand this. You obviously have don't, have lawyers who don't understand. And the fucking politicians don't understand anything. They just read the fucking media and they're like, oh my God, this guy's a victim. We have to make laws. And that's like the worst thing that could happen. Because like literally this is one guy, right? And he's probably the only person in Germany. I mean, there's maybe going to be another or two, but let's say, I mean... There are probably only a dozen of dozens, a dozen people in the next hundred years who are going to be this dumb and like this stubborn and this intent on just ruining their own life. Like if they make a law to protect this guy, it's going to be a huge disservice to the community as a whole because most of us are just like, you know, a bit more sensible and like laws shouldn't be like so it's gonna it's gonna be a huge um, swing in the other direction right they, I, I feel like they might criminalize some things that are just like idiotic um you know but we'll we'll see i mean we don't know i mean i don't know if, 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 if they can do stuff like i mean you have a lot of hate speech laws now i mean i talked about this in germany they have a lot and like they're that they're, they're trying to prosecute loads of stuff and sometimes it's just idiotic like they just they just can't like you know you, you have the legal system figuring out if they just make the laws too um like strict it's either gonna overwhelm the legal system right with with cases and shit um or they're just gonna be ignored because the police can't follow this and people you know they can't prosecute all of this um it's kind of like with the um with the with the upload filters right um i've talked about that on the show and and 
pretty much for all intents and purposes, life on the internet hasn't changed because they have they had to put all these exceptions for memes and stuff. And basically, I think everybody's kind of hands off and doesn't really want to um, want to actually follow through with this because, as I talked about on the show, it's a huge problem and you can't really can't you can't just check everything you upload. Uh, because copyright law is just not doesn't work that way. It's just too fucking complicated. It just doesn't. It's, it's just, the law is just basically incompatible in, 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 in with um, you know how copyright works. So it like you you could have that kind of stuff. That means he has an IQ below a hundred, I would guess. Yeah, although I don't think it's. I think um, the German psychological evaluation, like in, in it, it's not IQ based um, because I mean IQ has um, has flaws. Like IQ tests for very specific, like these, those tests, people go on about these all the time, especially on the internet, and they they test for very specific things and not for others. So there's been lots of papers. I mean, you can look this up where. Um, you know, people can be very intelligent and actually not have. Um, so, for example, social intelligence is is not really represented in your IQ score. Um, there's lots more like spatial understanding and and you know uh, logical problem solving kind of that. And I actually think he is actually not that dumb in those regards. I think with, I think with Drachenlord, you know, I'm obviously not a psychologist either. Uh, but like, I feel like the 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 social the social intelligence is what what is lacking here. I think he just can't. He has never probably never learned probably because also he was like on a um, you know special like low uh, you know the 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 the, the school for uh, you know the, the the people who drop out of the normal school system in Germ Germany like the, you know the kind of special education school. Um, he's probably never learned this. He's probably, I mean, he was, I, I believe him. He says he was bullied in school. I believe him. He was actually bullied there, but I think he actually doesn't, he doesn't have this social, um, in, in intelligence, right? He, he, he understands that what he's doing, I think on some basis is generating him income. So he's, he's keeping up, like he keeps doing it, but he doesn't understand the social implications completely like for his own life i don't think he can he can overview that like you know he he, he can't really see the big picture there and he just can't like i don't know i don't know about you talking generally to the listener hello you um i don't know about you but i i would think that if i was in the situation no matter how much I wanted a, a career in YouTube and no, not ma no matter how much money YouTube was sending me, if I was in a situation where my neighbors were like, like it's, it's, it's one thing to subject yourself to this kind of thing where you're like, it's me against the world, I can deal with it. That's, you know, at some point I can even understand that because I'm also very stubborn <laughs> and like to say what I think. You know, at some, at some point I have respect for that actually. Um, but like you have to see what it does to like if you live in like a 40 person village what it does to the people around you and you know after several years i think I, you know i would at the very least i would have moved to some place where that isn't happening where i don't have i don't know if you can move to somewhere in germany where you don't have neighbors or whatever but like i mean i would have just moved to a big city because the city, like, I, I would have solved the situation by just getting a flat somewhere in a big city, like in the middle of fucking Hamburg. Because, I mean, you can have hundreds of people turn up in a little village in Bavaria and the police just, like, basically fucking ignoring this for, like, six years and just sending a car there three times a day. If there is, a, like, 50 people in the middle of Hamburg throwing shit at somebody's flat, oh, you can bet the Hamburg police is going to turn up with riot Thing, and then it's not gonna just like cite them and send them away like if if this keeps happening they're just gonna fucking deploy the tear gas like you know if they if if you had lived in any big city this wouldn't have happened because like this kind of disruption of like the people around him and the peace in general would not stand in any city where there's a significant police uh you know uh presence and like the head of the police for like the fucking I don't know, uh, a block or, qu or like like suburb or wherever where he lives would have had to answer questions from people, right? 
Like, why is nothing being done? What is the shit? Why can't we sleep at night? Um, it's just because he lived in this tiny town in Bavaria that, like, nobody, like, people actually didn't care until, like, that one summer where, like, 250 people or 500, or I, I don't know, maybe, maybe even 1,000, like, a ton of people turned up, and it actually ended up in the press. That is when people started noticing. Um, but I think he, he misses, he doesn't have this, I don't know, I would call it social intelligence, right? The way to understand life in general. Um, otherwise, he would have come up with any of these solutions. I guess a functioning social circle would protect you from behaving like he does, and I guess he's lacking that. Yeah, I mean, he um, he basically, um, his, uh, I, th I think he was always behaving, it's my personal opinion, I, I probably think he was behaving like this. Um, in his private life as well, which is why his mother and his uh, sister just fucking left and said, we can't deal with you like you. I, I think he has this, He sometimes he behaves, um, and you can see that in his videos, you can see that. I mean, that's what I mean. If you watch lots of his videos, you can see what's happening. He behaves like an eight-year-old sometimes. You know, people, he makes a mistake. He obviously makes a mistake. He realizes he makes a mistake. People in chat tell him he make, he made a mistake and he just can't apologize. He just goes, no, I was right. I was right. Like, he just, like, at, at one point, uh, when f a famous thing is where he, he, he has these weird discussions, right? Where he's like, oh, I'm going to tell the world about things. And he was telling about, like, I don't know, organs in the body. And he was saying, like, the skin isn't an organ. And everybody was like, yes, it is. Here's, this is what Wikipedia says. This is what some medical encyclopedia says. And for years he was going, oh, no, I'm right. I mean, that's my interpretation. Like he just can't fucking man up to having made a mistake, right? And, and, I, I, and, and he's very resistant to people telling him, look, dude, what you're doing right now, I mean, I like you and I like what you're doing and I like that you're against the fucking bullies and that's good. But like maybe this one thing you shouldn't do Right, like like I, I talked about when he was like, it was like, oh, you cut the wrong internet cable, you fucking idiots! I have fiber, you know, and then the fucking haters go and just kill the internet access point for the whole village for two days. Right, people go like, just stop taunting them. And I think people are, have tried in his personal life to like have an influence on him and tell him like, you sh like this thing probably you shouldn't do, and he's just not listening. Right, and as in normal life, when you have friends and 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 parents and 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 relations and people who mean well, and they they try nicely to um, like tell you things, and you just keep ignoring them, then they'll just at some point they'll just say, you know, I've been telling Rainer for like five years that this is not good. I'm gonna give up, and I this does is not. I mean, pretty much you. Again, talking to the listener. Hello, Mr. Mrs. Um, whatever uh, you want to be referred to, listener. Um, you know such a person. I'm pretty sure you had that in your life. You had a, like a relations. You know that guy or that friend We were just like, dude, we're now 30, right? You're still like binge drinking and you still like live in a... Like we're all like either like married or we all have like houses or kids or whatever and there's like this one guy who still lives in like um like student uh like sharing flats with like four girls that are like 15 years younger than him or whatever you're like dude I, you gotta grow up like you gotta move on i mean i respect your life like you know something like this i don't know anybody i'm pretty sure everybody has something like this like that one guy but like or girl or whoever and and you're like dude and you, you're trying to kind of like i don't know have influence them and they're just like not having it they're like no this is my life fuck you if you don't like and you just give up like either you you give up and you don't you don't talk to them ever again or you're like, okay, I can really like you and you're good to party with, but let's just agree that we're not going to talk about this part of your life because I have a very different opinion and you're just, every, anytime I bring it up, you're just completely blocking it. So, you know, I, I think that that's that's what's going on here, um, I feel. But any any anyway, uh, I think that's, that's enough about Drachenlord for a while. Um, until he uh, kills somebody and then 
gets gets off from that for some interesting reason or something else happens um, and we get some really crazy law and we actually get the Lex Draconis. I'm going to move on to other topics now, but I thought that was uh, very, very important. Uh, speaking of uh, other topics... This is the point where I talk about the feedback from you, the producers, uh, the listeners who are, you know, if you write in, provide feedback, also producers. And in this episode, I'm actually, I'm not going to talk about feedback because um, I had several people giving me interesting viewpoints and, and criticism and and thoughts on my recent episode, the previous episode on Ukraine and, you know, Putin's war and all that, uh, 112, um, and yeah, I want to, I want to talk about that, so in the, in the next episode, I'm going to do a feedback episode, which is not going to completely be a feedback episode, I, I think I've, um, I've, from, from talking to some of these people at length, actually, um, I've, um, analyzed a, a theme, which is basically uh, war and justice and how I, you know, I talked about justice on this show before and, you know, laws and justice and, and, and how, how what, what, what I was commenting on and what people maybe rub people the wrong way. I think some people misunderstood it. Anyway, I'm going to do an episode on that. It's not going to be a complete, like, I'm answering feedback. I, I think I'm actually not going to go into any specific feedback because most of these people actually said they don't want, I think all of them said they don't want to get mentioned. Um, some of these people were from Russia. Uh, there was actually one person from the Ukraine, I think. That's what they said. I'm just going to believe them. Um, and, um, I mean, they don't live in Ukraine right now. Um, they live in Germany, but, you know, they're, they're, they're originally from Ukraine and they're still talking to people there and stuff. Um, but, uh, so I'm not going to go into like what the, I'm going to make an do an episode where I'm going to elaborate on some stuff, but it's heavily influenced from people's feedback. So it's kind of going to be a um, a feedback episode, and that's why I'm not going to the, the reason feedback was all about that episode. So I'm I'm just going to do that. I also have another episode planned on. Um, a little update on on what's going on in Ukraine, like the you know the war, and and the 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 stuff that's been happening, you know the Russian retreat uh, around Kiev and all that. I wanna I wanna talk about that, but that's gonna be I don't know if it, that's gonna be the next one after. I've got so many topics I wanna talk about. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's let's get out of here and uh, clear the airwaves and then. Um, leave the topics of, of, of future episodes to the, f to the future when I actually do them. I don't want to turn into the Drachenlord where my content is just announcing things that I'm going to do and then I'm not going to do them. That's, that's one of his uh, strong points as well. I've mentioned at the beginning of the show that I'm very thankful um, to people who just, you know, continue to support the show even when I wasn't releasing episodes. And I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful. I have to say that again. I'm very thankful to you. I'm thankful to everybody um, for supporting the show because uh, God knows it's, um, it's, it's been a long and hard road um, as a freelance journalist. I'm, I'm still enjoying it very much. It's the only thing I want to do. But, you know, sometimes uh, making money is hard and everything getting more expensive <sighs> doesn't help either. And right now, I'm, I mean, <laughs> not only the expense, but like why I didn't also didn't release episodes like both my car and my motorbike have are in service right now because they have to go to the TÜV, the Technische Überprüfungsverein, you know, the German uh, MOT, basically like the check you have to do every two years. And it's just, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare from like, the money I have to pay, uh, you know, if you're a 20-year-old car, there's stuff. The motorbike needs new tires. Uh, 
to organizing, getting there, getting everything in order. Then I'm like, it's been amazing weather. Uh, and then I have to drive my motorbike 40 kilometers to the like repair shop. And that day it's like pissing down. It was like raining. I've got no, I've got like literally no fucking uh, profile on the tires. Uh, I haven't ridden <laughs> for like months. I'm like, oh God, this is, ah. And then like two days later, it's like sunny and warm and fuck. <laughs> like, why, why, why is it always on those days? But anyway, uh, long story short, I really, uh, yes, if you're supporting the show, um, if you're supporting it by um, providing feedback, uh, being a producer, that is amazing. That helps a lot. Um, please do that. Keep doing that. And if you're not doing that, do that. Um, details are in the show notes. Um, Private Citizen Press, how to contact me. But everybody who's supporting me monetarily uh, via Patreon, um, very much appreciated. And also one of um, support via PayPal, producers at fab.industries, email address. It's also very much appreciated. This is the value for value model um, as pioneered on the No Agenda show, which means I'm doing this for you. It's free. You listen to it. You decide what is worth to you. And then you decide if you want to give back or not. And the people who've done that, who've supported this very episode um, over the last few weeks until it came out, I'm, I'm very thankful. Uh, so thanks to George's, Steve Ho's, Butterbean's, Rodain the Insane, Michael Small, Jonathan M. Hattie, Michael Mullen Jensen, Dave, 1I11G, Lilk, <laughs> Jaroslav Lichtblau, uh, Jackie Pleisch, Philipp Klostermann, IKN, Bennett Piata, Sandman616, Tobias, Vlad, Mode 7, Kai Sears, Joe Poser, Rizal, Fadi Mansur, Dirk Didi, Avis, David Potter, Mika, Mr. Amish, Cam, Dave Amrish, Ricky M, Barry Williams, Jonathan, RJ Tracy, Rick Bragg, Captain Egghead, Astral C, Robert Forster, Superuser, D, and No Reply. Thanks to all of you. And also thanks to my Twitch subscribers, obviously live streaming this on Twitch, along with also live streaming a lot of Elden Ring. So if you either support this podcast or Elden Ring, me playing Elden Ring and dying hundreds of times, I thank you very much as well. So uh, thanks to Mike the Dane, JonathanMH.com, Luna Spork, Galtaran, Altruestrus Jim, MTE Sorrow, Redeemer F, Bacon the Pork, and Harry Vatana. And thanks to everybody who's supporting me twice there. Because, I mean, Twitch, you can, you know, if you have Amazon Prime, you can just link that to your Twitch account. And you get one subscription free each month. You have to renew it each month. But if you do that, uh, I get like, you know, it's like, what, five euros, whatever uh, Twitch takes of that. But like, I get a, you support the show and you don't have to pay anything because one subscription is on Jeff Bezos. So uh, thanks to you and thanks to Jeff Bezos. Um never know why I'd, I'd would actually say that but thanks to Jeff thanks for saving the expanse and thanks for supporting me on Twitch um, I'm also thankful to Bindmark at bindmark.co.uk which is an amazing UK cloud hoster who's um, providing the service I use uh, for audio file storage and bandwidth to you if you download them um, couldn't do it without them. Without them, I'd be bankrupt. So thanks to Byte Mark. Thanks for enabling me to do this podcast. And uh, that's it. I'm going to play us out. Oh, was the uh, theme song for the show is called Acoustic Roots by Raul Kabzali. And uh, I'm playing us out with a song called Hear Her Calling by uh, Will Harrison. Um, and that's it for me. Um, I'll hope, you know, I won't be back ne next Wednesday. Hopefully I'll get you an episode before that. If not, don't despair. I'll be back. I'm just busy, probably getting wet on my motorbike. Uh, aim to misbehave in the meantime.
All right, that is another podcast recorded. Finally, took me long enough, didn't it? Um, right, yeah. Um, that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna go run off now and uh, edit this show and uh, get it all get it all out, you know. Get all out into the world. And um, yeah, we're going to raid uh, Aqua FPS now. A apparently, everybody's playing Tarkov uh, tonight. Uh, there, there was a patch. Um, I think they added revolvers, I think, if I, if I remember correctly. And uh, I think they added the uh, Chapa Rhino which is really close to my heart because uh, that's a gun like well it's not not completely that gun but a, uh, a, a the gun miller in, uses in the expanse is uh, based on the rhino which is kind of a really cool looking revolver because it has like it shoots from the lower hole on the cylinder it's a six gun you know a six shooter revolver but it, like you know normal revolvers shoot from the the, the top uh cartridge hole and it shoots from the lower one so it's, it's like really weird looking but apparently everybody now on uh, Tarkov is, is playing like cowboys they're dressing up as cowboys um, and they're using revolvers and uh, it's uh, I was watching Deadly Slop earlier and it, it seemed to be really fun so uh, let's let's raid Aqua and uh, and I'm gone I'm out of here I would love to play some um, Elden Ring now um but I really can't. I need to finish this podcast and then I'll have to do some writing. Um, so, yeah. So I'm afraid that's it for me. But uh, thanks thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it a lot. And uh, I'll see you soon. I'll be back sooner or later with some Elden Ring. I'm, I'm, I'll probably stream the next podcast. I'm going to try to. I, did, I don't. It's all it's all up in the air, as you can tell. Um, next week's gonna be sketchy with streaming, I feel. Um, but but we'll see. I'll I'll try to uh, grace you with my presence as often as I can, and uh, I appreciate you um, watching the the stream. Thank you, and uh, goodbye, and uh, see you soon. <laughs>